Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing the movie review in these tough, miserable times, but to set the mood straight so I can feel relaxed and happy and all before this whole thing will be over, and I hope so. I'm still waiting for that. But I'm going to take some time for me to survive. <laughs> but I am going to do the review of Zombieland 2 Double Tap, the long awaited horror comedy sequel to the original Zombieland from 2009, so it's like a decade already, bringing back the four gains who are about to survive a zombie apocalypse by killing all these flesh-eating zombies. So this is their continuation of them all. Bringing back Tallahassee's, Columbus, Richita, and Little Rock. Yeah. So it was great to see them back again. You know, I know after the success of Zombieland, it started out as originally a TV series, but but imposed as a movie instead. But they did actually have a TV series for a while, like in 2013, I believe, uh, which aired on Amazon, but that didn't last. Probably doesn't save the match for the original film. But of course, after the success, we were getting The Walking Dead. Um, Zombie Apocalypse was still going on ahead, too. I mean, then there's that unfunny comedy, Scott's Guide to a Zombie Apocalypse. Yeah, no match for these two films. And, which of course that includes uh, <laughs> Shaun of the Dead. Um, but of course, you know. Some of the original writers went on to do Deadpool 1 and 2, now counting Once Upon a Time, uh, Once Upon a Deadpool, which is a PG-13 cut of Deadpool 2. Yeah, Red Reese and Paul Wernick. So it was great that they came back uh, for the sequel of this movie. And I know Ruben Fletcher just previously did uh, Benham which I know I had mixed reviews beyond its control. Abigail Breslin, however, went on to do a bad film called The Call with Halle Berry. That's probably the last time I ever saw her in. Emma Stone, on the other hand, she got to do some great films like The Help, as well as La La Land, which she's just won an Oscar for her performance. Great for her. Meanwhile, Woody Harrelson and Jesse Eisberg went on to do other stuff, too, in their careers, as it continues. I mean, of course, I know Eisenberg went on to do The Social Network. Still not a big fan of that movie. Um, but then he teamed up with Harrelson again for the Now You See Me movies, both of which suck. Sorry. Um... But, of course, look way through it, though, I mean, we had to wait this long to finally get this particular sequel, which I know they weren't going to do it at first, they weren't so sure they are planning on that, but they figured that the original writers wanted to, and I guess already because, you know, this is still becoming a trend, I know we're getting video games and the TV show and all, that... Why not, man? I mean, I guess it'll set the mood straight, but the only problem is they're not even so sure if this movie will will match its success to the original. I'm like, because think of it this way, I mean, it's still, it isn't dated. I mean, that's for sure. I mean, it still holds up even to this day. And it still will be, but they're just afraid that it won't probably match the, the humor that the first one had, and maybe that was the case, but... And I, I understand, because sequels always suffer these days. They always have, like, they never get some of the humor right, or they probably didn't get the, the story particularly as perfect as they were going to hope for. But they're trying to do their best not to become a copycat of them all, or just become a, a cash grab, but that was certainly not the case here. But after seeing it, though, I, and I just saw it twice already, I hope I can get it on Blu-ray someday, if, if I can. 
I mean, I know my birthday's coming up too. Next week. Can't believe it. Probably be my first birthday in quarantine. I hate that. But whatever. Um, but still, I have fun. I mean, it may it may have its issues, but that's okay. I can live with it. I'm just going to definitely have some plenty of time to laugh and just have fun. Just having to see the whole game back again. Just surviving, killing all these flesh-eating zombies. And <laughs> the zombie apocalypse they're living in. So, hey, you know, I understand what they're getting through. I mean, they want to do whatever they can in their lives. So, hey, that's, that's the case. Um, but I'm just glad that they finally came back and they they did they took a lot of time to film this and they took a lot of time to develop and you know trying to beg the CEO Tal Brahman to to continue so let's just hope even for some new added characters joining in and maybe even a surprise cameo then of course that's what we're gonna go for so, anyway let's start the review stars Woody Harrelson Jesse Eisenberg Emma Stone Abigail Breslin, Rosario Dawson, yep, a new character to join as Nevada, <laughs> which um, I know Rosario Dawson was in films like He Got Game, Men in Black 2, Rent, Clerks 2, Sin City, even Kids, among others. Um, she's a great actress. Zoe Dutch, which I know she started out on the Disney Channel series called The Sweet Life on Deck. Interestingly enough, she's actually the daughter of director Howard Dutch. And also the daughter of, of actress uh, Leah Thompson. That's right. And I know Leah Thompson's been known for doing films like Howard the Duck, Back to the Future Trilogy, um, Jaws Free, Red Dawn, the original Red Dawn, among others. Carolina the City, the TV series, so of course. <laughs> Avon Yagia, I don't know if I said it right. Apparently, he was from the TV series uh, Victorious from Nickelodeon. Um, but he went on to do uh, Ghost Wars, that's on sci fi. I figured. Luke Wilson, yep, great actor, you know, who's also the brother of Owen Wilson. Been in films like Old School, Bottle Rocket, The World Tenenbaums, Blue Streak, Legally Blonde, Intricacy, uh, My Super Ex-Girlfriend, among others, <laughs> Henry Pool's Here, <laughs> okay. Thomas Middleditch, which I know I previously reviewed Search Party last week but I know he was from Silicon Valley so it's amazing to actually see him again even though I did saw him before <laughs> and, I'm, okay. and yes um, once again we got a cameo by Bill Murray <laughs> so it's great to see him again only it takes you back 10 years from now <laughs> before the zombie apocalypse occurs or just the beginning um, yeah, there's going to be spoilers in the film. You know what? I'm going to keep it that way. So why not? Because <laughs> I did spoil the first one, too. <laughs> All right. It's written by Red Reese, Paul Wernick, and David Callahan, the writer of all the Expendable films. Great to know. And it's directed by Ruben Fletcher. The movie began set ten years after the zombie apocalypse as it continues, which had the events in the first film. Tallahassee's Columbus, Richita, and Little Rock, all played by Woody Harrelson, Jesse Eisenberg, Emma Stone, and Abigail Breslin. Yep, they are the survivors. I'm proud of it. <laughs> you know, just going from place to place, you know, killing all these flesh eating zombies and all, setting by their own rules. Well, Columbus's own rules that he has. <laughs> so they basically become the experts to 
kill them all before they suddenly find an abandoned White House in Washington, D.C. So they'll be setting up as their own home. <laughs> so they're almost like <laughs> Tallahassee will be the president of the United States, even though they're probably going to have Wichita to join and maybe have <laughs> Little Rock as uh, First Lady. But I know, I know. Gender identity here. <laughs> anyway, Columbus decided to propose to Wichita by using a Hope Diamond. While Tallahassee's rebuffs Little Rock's hopes to start her own family. So I guess at times, you know, they're trying to have the best times of their lives inside the White House, but they're not exactly experiencing it as they were hoping they would. So, by the next morning, uh, Tallahassee's found a note from Wichita and Little Rock as they both left, feeling that Tallahassee's has been treating. Little Rock like a child. Yeah, we get this cliche in these simple movies here and there <laughs> or shows. But Wichita fears that she's too attached to Columbus. So figure that because if that was the case, she's afraid that they might get into a divorce. So that means more fighting, not getting along or anything. So they all felt pretty left out. So a month later, both Columbus and Tallahassee's were just exploring at the mall until somehow Columbus uh, got startled by a ditzy blonde. Yeah, we're going for that ditzy blonde uh, stereotype here. Named Madison, who's played by Zoe Dush. Who actually survived... Um, the entire zombie land by being stuck inside a fridge which is at a pink berry store but Madison just quickly annoys uh, Tallahassee's but Columbus you know feeling pretty bored and left out that he decided to invite her because well he's trying to find some nice people in his life you know wants to fall in love so they brought her back into the White House and eventually they had sex because they weren't so sure if Richard Ta was going to come back same goes with Little Rock like they just want to move on with their lives but then somehow Richard Ta had returned and just found out that Columbus did actually had slept with Madison while she explains that Little Rock has left for Graceland yeah, that was the home of Elvis Presley, <laughs> where she meets a pacifist named Berkeley, who's played by Avon Jogia, and informs that um, there are more agile and durable super zombies coming on their path, which is at this rate, <laughs> which is a take on Terminator. There's actually a T-800 uh, zombie. <laughs> That's hard to kill. <laughs> Pretty clever, isn't it? Yeah. But fearing for a Little Rock's safety, they head towards uh, Graceland in a rundown Pontiac uh, minivan for the 90s, I believe. Yeah, because I know Pontiac is, has been defunct for a very long time. And yes, they had made some minivans, but. Tallahassee's hated the idea of riding in one because, after all, they did stole uh, their actual uh, vehicle that they had, you know, which is enough to kill all these zombies and they'd be survived and protected. So. Anyway, while they're on the road, uh, they try to um, grab a luxury RV, but Columbus actually has a strict of, of no clown policies, yeah, because he's afraid of clowns. It wouldn't be. So they prevent by getting onto the ice cream truck. So they decided to screw that and say, let's just go on the RV instead. The, the only problem is, though, they're being infested in a trap by these zombies and they're going around attacking them. And yeah, this is where Columbus is just on top of the RV, you know, just coming up with some <laughs> time clocks to tell them 
straight ahead, you know, where all the zombies are going to appear, so that way they can shoot them on their heads and and you know, blast them, hoping they'll <laughs> they'll all die. And if that was the case, I mean, yes, they did found the super zombies that was hard to kill and all. They try to kill him as soon as possible. I mean, it was ready to attack Tallahassee's until Wichita finally nailed him. Um, and that was also another case, too, was that Madison almost got um, eaten by one zombie, but just in the nick of time, uh, Columbus saved her life. Well, they, well, that was hoping that would be the case, but then... Then they realized that Madison might have gotten infected. Well, at first, we thought that she got infected because um, she started vomiting and and already her, her face is getting all swollen up. So she was going to turn into a zombie and Columbus was ready to shoot her. Well, this is going to be the biggest spoiler of them all. Actually, Madison truly survived. It was actually a nut allergy that she had. So that's why she was all swollen up and started vomiting because she started eating some candy bar that has a lot of nuts in it. She's allergic to peanuts. So apparently she was the one who rode on the, the ice cream truck all alone. She did bought her stuff, and I, I know even for this point on, <laughs> I mean Tallahassee was going to bring, was going to help her bring all, all of her stuff, but left it out of the, the mini band, you know, so it's like, I travel. <laughs> okay. They finally went all the way to Graceland. They then realized that Graceland home has already been damaged and all. So they try to find a better place, and that turned out to be an Elvis um, hotel that's basically a dedication to Elvis Presley. And that's where they meet um, Nevada, who's played by Rosario Dawson, and happens to be the owner of this hotel that's inspired by. And, um, of course... Uh, <laughs> I guess she might as well just be the love interest for Tallahassee's, <laughs> if that was the case, if they'll ever meet again. Um, all in all, though, and I know they're trying to continue on their journey to find Little Rock, because unfortunately they went into this place called Babylon, where they join in with all the rest of these, I guess you could say, hippies. You know, trying to survive, you know, they're already melting all their weaponry so they can make uh, all these necklaces, uh, braids, and all this other stuff that they need, and also to build this entire tower that they have. Anyway, so by the time they stayed in, of course, <laughs> Tallahassee was like dressing up as Elvis Presley and all, you know, just to. You know, cheer on uh, Nevada and up. Um, even Columbus was wearing the the shoes that were the perfect fit. Yeah, one of Elvis's shoes. They somehow bumped into um, basically the opposite of Tallahassee's and Columbus. Albuquerque and Flagstaff, both played by Luke Wilson and Thomas Middleditch. So, and and they even come up with their own. Uh, survival by using their the rules only they did it uh, <laughs> in numerals right there they come up with their own the uh, types that they have apparently they just crashed in where um, their vehicle was at hoping that they'll be able to take it because they actually drive in a monster truck yeah they crashed into it so yeah, they, they definitely resemble to them, but the Zooper zombies had arrived and they're ready to attack them, hoping they'll shoot them down. But then we didn't realize that, yes, 
they all got bitten. So now they're ready to become zombies, and that's going to be a problem because now <laughs> both Tallahassee and Columbus was ready to uh, stop them. I mean, they wanted to get to know them because that way, who knows, they'll be a huge team to for survival. Both of them became zombies, and they all died. It was pretty difficult, but they had to do what they can. So it was pretty miserable. They went on to their journey to find Little Rock. And that's where Madison finally came back, I just mentioned already. So they joined her. I know I, I know they've been bickering around and not getting along at times and having some issues here and there. But when they finally made to to Babylon, I mean, just to find Little Rock, they stayed in for a while, trying to celebrate the good life if they can, only to note that Tallahassee is going to leave on his own, only to find out there's tons of flesh-eating zombies around and it's going to be hard for him to attack so apparently he came back you know hoping that there's going to be a way to survive because there's like tons of them so they come up with a plan to actually try to stop them seeing that they already melted all the weapons around they're going to start bringing all these parts and everything to, to stop them all and it's going to be a lot difficult than, than they thought um, and yes, even Nevada finally shows up in a monster truck, so so now they get into to the action. <laughs> By the end of the day, because they finally defeated all the zombies, especially Tallahassee's is jumping on, onto the hook, and so all the zombies are going to fall all the way to their deaths for this entire ginormous tower. <laughs> Hoping he'll survive too, <laughs> that that'll be the case. So now, um, as far, far as things are concerned, uh, Madison decided to stay with the entire group of people, hippies at um, <laughs> Babylon, and joining in with uh, Berkeley and all. The four team, Tallahassee's, uh, joining in with uh, Wichita, Columbus, and Little Rock. You know, they're, they're having their creative differences and are about to continue to go on a journey and yet they join in with Nevada in a uh, pink Cadillac. Yes, both Columbus and Bridgeta had found each other so now they're together for the best and hoping they go for their next adventure if that ever happens. Now I'm going to get to the um, the mid credit scenes. Uh, yes, I'm going to talk about that. Where we now get the cameo by Bill Murray where he was actually interviewing for his upcoming Garfield sequel. Yes, because even though we had the first two Garfield films that he provided the voice of, they figured, yeah, there's going to be another one. I know we never had a Garfield sequel, so maybe that's a good thing we're not going to get one. But I love how they're just playing the sides here. But they were getting ready for the uh, zombie apocalypse, so that's where <laughs> Bill Murray just goes around, you know, defeating all these zombies and for his survival sake and yet he's even quoting lines from Ghostbusters and all <laughs> like I ain't afraid of no zombies <laughs> yeah okay and yes uh, the interviewers that he was uh, promoting though they join in by some of your familiar ones like for example Al Roker from NBC um, Lilia Stefan from Univision's uh, El Golda y La Flaca. I, I hope I said it right, but that's a uh, basically a celebrity um, gossip show. Uh, she's also a, a Cuban-American model, too. But, uh, Josh Horwitz, and yeah, and you wouldn't believe this, Grace Randolph from Beyond the Trailer. Yes, which she's the one who who wanted a PG-13 uh, Deadpool, and I guess suddenly they they brought her in as an inside joke, in a way. And yeah, she does get attacked, so <laughs> who cares? Not the biggest fan of her. Well, I, I used to like her, but I don't know. <laughs> but you get the idea. Um, now, okay, for the movie itself, um, yeah, the movie may have its issues here and there. Like, it 
it may have taken away from the actual humor that this movie got. But you know what? I'm glad it, it continued with the journey where we get to see some new characters going by. Um, now for the characters alone, I thought Nevada was actually a great choice. This could definitely work well for Tallahassee's uh, love interest. And, I, I, and she's very tough. You know, I, I love the scene where she was about to uh, take down all these uh, zombies while driving on the monster truck. And I know, <laughs> even though it wasn't easy because Columbus was ready to puke. That's why he wanted the window to open and, <laughs> and they're just driving around. And she also took down all the other ones while they're trying to climb all the way up to the tower. And so, I mean, I do wish that Rosario Dawson had been in the film more, though. I'll give you that. I mean, it's not under you. I mean, it's a little underused, but I do think she deserves more. Uh, Zora Dutch, on the other hand, I mean, yeah, she does get pretty annoying, irritating, kind of cloying in a way. I mean, because, you know, she is pretty dumb. Like, she doesn't even know what Babylon spells, or she basically thinks of it as the song by David Gray. Yeah, I'm surprised they even have a reference to that. And I know, I know, Columbus was desperate. I mean, that's why he wanted to have sex with her, because if Wichita's not going to do much, then, you know. Uh, yeah, we also learned that Richard Tell actually had a... It's great to see the game all back after 10 years. I mean, they have changed a bit. But most of all, you know, they do have the same personality as they always have. You know, it's time to nut up or shut up. They still have that catchphrase that Tallahassee loves to say. And, and all this other funny uh, bits here and there. A very secret name, but I don't... But you know what? I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but anyway, Madison was just basically just a dumb blonde stereotype, and that's all she is. You know, she wears pink. You know, she she talks in a very squeaky, irritating voice. But she could be cute, so I'll give you that. I can understand why Tallahassee's didn't like her as much. Yeah. Um... Anyway, and, and uh, as for Berkeley, eh, he was okay, but nothing special. I mean, he's just basically a pacifist, and he also has weed, so he joins in with uh, Little Rock to, to smoke a joint or two and try to be part of the, the group of hippies. Maybe uh, you know, Little Rock want to have some love here. Um... I wish Abacookie and Flagstaff, you know, both played by Luke Wilson and Thomas Middleditch, had more screen time to do. But I guess if they weren't bitten by those zombies, then I think they could have worked well as a team. So, so yeah, they were pretty underused, actually. <laughs> kind of a waste. But I know. They had to go for that. <laughs> it's like, there's no other way for them to survive, but they're going to try their best to do so. I mean, they always wanted to work on the team. doesn't work out. They always want to have a girlfriend. doesn't work out. You know, they try to find someone else to look after, hoping to get in touch, but it never works out. <laughs> Can't even find the perfect van or any other. I mean, they're almost ready to have some bad luck that's going around. Columbus continues to set his own strict rules that he has, you know, for survival, like cardio and all. Still does that stuff. Okay. But still, um, I had fun. I laughed. I had a good time. It was definitely worth watching, maybe more than once. Um, it may not hold uh, together with the first movie, but you know what? I'll take both of them, you know? At least I waited this long to have a zombie land to continue their journey to surviving a zombie apocalypse. I mean, as long as, you know, they don't get affected and all. And it's good to know that they didn't get killed either, and they didn't get bitten, but they almost did. <laughs> That's always the risk. Yeah. Anyway. But, hey, I enjoyed it. I love it. So, you know what? 
I'm happy. So anyway, that's Zombieland 2, Double Tap, and I give the movie four and a half stars. Just for the sake of it. Okay. I mean, it may not be better than the first Zombieland, but that's okay. You know, I can keep it that way. It's still very funny. And I, I still love the, the zombie uh, hit of the year uh, clips that they put into it also. <laughs> okay, I know, I'm taking too long. So anyway, I'm Joseph A. Sabora. Have fun surviving, and I'll see you later. Bye.